Hi, this is Rick Adams from practicalcsm.com, and you join me for episode 44 of Customer Success Rants and Musings, how to calculate the return on investment or ROI of customer success. And this is something that I think is, is you know, quite a hot topic. I think uh, it's, it's something that, that a lot of people are discussing. So should we calculate the return on investment? Uh, is it important for us to do so? I would say, yes, it is. I think ROI from anything. Uh, customer success is an investment. Our organization, the CFO, signs a check uh, you know, for our salaries, for our equipment, uh, for our office space, uh, you know, for, for our internet, for our, for our technology, for all of these things. It costs money for training, for management, and so on. So running a customer success team takes money. So we've got to work out, is, you know, does it actually bring back more in value than it costs? And uh, if so, then there's, uh, you know, an argument to say, well, then in that case, we should continue to do it. But if not, maybe we shouldn't, frankly. OK, so that's why we need to calculate it. We need to work out whether there is value being attained through customer success that could not be attained through doing other things. So, for example, instead of having customer success, should we just you know, hire more salespeople? Or uh, should we invest the money in training our product support team? Or should we um, add, a, add a few more people into our product team or uh, add more developers? So there are all sorts of ways we could spend money and money is a finite um, asset of the company. Why should we invest in customer success? I want to point out that it is not a competition versus sales. I, I, I get a little tired of this, is, is, and I think this is a bit of immaturity in our uh, profession. So I do apologize if that's going to get anybody's back up, but that's how I see it, is this, this idea that we're competing against sales. And you know, sales has a target, and that's why sales are taken seriously. And if we want to be taken seriously, customer success has to have a target. And, and, you know, and our target needs to be as important as sales' target, and blah, 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 blah. Now, look. Here's the truth, right, is, you know, this concept that sales generates all revenues is rubbish, all right? Sales does not generate any revenues, okay? Customers generate revenues. The salespeople don't write the checks, okay? The customer writes the check. It's their money. The sales team happen to be the last or one of the last parts of the journey that the customer goes on in making the decision as to whether or not to make a purchase. But that includes marketing. It includes product development. It includes finance. It includes legal. It includes the senior management team making strategic decisions about what we should and shouldn't do and having a good vision. It includes everybody. You know, including the people who make the sandwiches and sweep the floor and, and keep the lights on for us. OK, everyone is involved in making sure that we end up with something that the, that the, the, end, that the customer says he says yes to. And I'm not saying that sales doesn't have an important role because obviously, quite obviously, is a difficult task and it's a very important role. But they do not generate the revenues we all do, including ourselves. So it is not a competition against sales. It's not they do that type of revenue, we do this type of revenue. You got it wrong. That is not how it works, okay? What we've got to look at is our part in the journey. It's a journey. And there are many touch points in that journey. And some of them are pre-sales, like sales, and some of them are post-sales, like customer success. And we've got to focus on what we do in customer success. That's what we've got to talk about uh, when we're thinking about ROI. So what types of ROI can we uh, show? Well, can we, for example, uh, reduce the time to first value for our customers? That's going to make them happier, right? Is it, if they're going to be able to start generating value from what they purchase more quickly than if the CSM wasn't hit there. And also not just generate the first value, but the, the, um, the time to zero. The time to zero meaning that at the beginning, it's just a cost for the customer, right? They've had to purchase at least the first year's contracts. They've had to hire new people. They've had to invest time and effort into planning. They've had to train their team. They're, they're down. They're, they've been less productive during this time as well, perhaps. So they're actually down. So how long does it take them, take them to break even on the deal and start to generate value? 
Okay, so time to zero. The pre-agreed milestones then, you know, by the end of year one, we want to have this increase in this or this decrease in that. By the end of year two, we want to see this by the end of year three. So the pre-agreed milestones, and then of course the actual outcomes and, uh, as well, the minor and the major outcomes, whatever they may have been, they're likely to change as the customer moves forwards. But nevertheless, you know, are we helping them to hit their outcome requirements, whatever those may be? Those are the things that we need to be measuring in order to come back and then say, yeah, look, this is the ROI that our customer success team is delivering. And these are leading indicators because these are going to happen before we get to see any results. So before the customer is prepared to renew, they want to see in increases in um, uh, the value coming out, reductions in time taken to do it. If they see those, then they will renew. So these are all leading indicators compared to the stuff that we tend to look at, which is the internal facing KPIs, the churn reduction, the renewal revenues, the upsells, the cross sales, the advocacy levels, the satisfaction levels, the lifetime value increases. We talked about those, didn't we, in a, in a previous rant and musing uh, episode. Uh, product improvements, all of those things also are parts of things that can be measured as ROI coming from customer success management team. However, what, what's different about these things is that they are lagging indicators. They are the real evidence, frankly. They're the proof that what we've done really is bringing an ROI, but they are afterwards and it's too late to actually then do anything about it. So that's why it's really important to be measuring some of the leading indicators that we looked at here, like the time to first value, the time to zero, and whether we're meeting the customer's outcome requirements, as well as the lagging indicators of churn reduction, renewals, upsell, cross-sell, advocacy, etc. So I hope you found that useful. If that has you know, kicked off some ideas for you, get in touch can talk about how we can provide training for your team, how we can help you to understand types of KPIs and, and how to manage them, create a strategy for your organization in more depth. Uh, please do hit the subscribe button uh, here on YouTube. It really helps us uh, because uh, um, the more people who subscribe, the, the, the more the algorithm works in our favor on YouTube. Uh, and um, well, I hope you've enjoyed this and look forward to speaking to you in future episodes. Thank you.